Hello, welcome back to the Watford Way. You can see I've got a big smile on my face because before we dive into the Swansea City game, I've got to sit here and discuss my thoughts and feelings on Watford's most recent victory, uh, which was a 6-2 win away at Hillsborough over Sheffield Wednesday in what was, quite frankly, a phenomenal second-half display from the Hornets. Vacuum Bio didn't just score a goal. He didn't score two goals. He didn't even score three goals. He scored four goals. Let me just repeat that one more time for you. Vacuum Bio, the crow, scored four goals away from home. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was doing a live match watch long here on the Watford Way. There's about 50 people uh, tuned in live to the stream. Uh, and yeah, we were all absolutely astonished watching the game. A phenomenal man of the match performance and bio. And I think what I've learned about bio, especially from that last game, is that he is a big, big confidence player. I think it was really good of Tom Ince, who took that first penalty to give the second one to Bio because of course we all know Bio hasn't scored uh, for a very very long time so for Tom Ince to give Bio that penalty uh, and to have confidence in him to score that I thought was a really nice touch. Bio stuck the penalty away and never ever since that moment occurred uh, you could see Bio on the pitch was playing uh, with so much confidence and all three of his other finishes actually um, I thought were really, really good. Obviously culminating in that lovely, lovely chip uh, towards the end of the game. I think the chip secured his hat-trick um, and then he scored another goal after that, of course, to get his fourth. The other finish was a header he rose for um, at the back post, which he did really well for. Um, obviously, I've mentioned the chip, the penalty, and I think his last goal was a lovely ball by Yasser Larouche, who made a good run down the left-hand side. Ball across the box to Bayo, who stuck it away um, at the back post. So a penalty, a header, a chip, um, and a back post tapping, really. So four very different goals and four de very different finishes from Bakun Bayo um, in that game. The other goal scorer I've not mentioned was Ryan Porteous, who actually got the goal scoring opened uh, for Watford against Sheffield Wednesday. He put Watford ahead in the first half. Some great work by Quadro Bar once again, as we've mentioned before, down that right-hand side. I think Quadro Bar clearly is in his element when he's 1v1 uh, versus a full-back or a wing-back. Um, he's much better suited to that rather than playing up front, I feel, uh, against the two centre-back system. Um, but yeah, Quadro Bar took on his man 1v1, got to the byline, lovely ball across the box to Ryan Porteous, who finished uh, like a seasoned clinical striker. And that was on Ryan Porteous's 250th club appearance as well, both at Watford uh, and Hibernian, taking both of them appearances um, into account. So very pleased for Porto after his struggles with his mental health that is mentioned publicly um, since the summer, really, in, in the Euros um, with Scotland. So very pleased for Porto. And all round, the performance, I thought, uh, was excellent. Of course, a bit frustrated to still concede the two goals. I would like uh, to have kept a clean sheet away from home, but I'm not going to focus on the negatives too much here. Watford scored six goals for the first time in a very, very long time. I personally can't remember the last time Watford scored six goals at home, let alone um, away from home. I think the Blackpool game at Vicarage Road may be the last time. Correct me if I'm wrong um, in the comment section, but yeah, it's been a long time since Watford uh, scored that many goals. So uh, yeah, very, very pleased. Right, before we dive into my thoughts on the Swansea game, I think it's right we hear from Rhys, uh, who runs the Swans Away Days YouTube channel, to get his thoughts on the upcoming fixture. So thanks very much for getting me onto your channel. Of course, Swansea versus Watford on Tuesday night, Bonfire night. Let's hope it's a good game. Let's hope this fireworks. Um, but yeah, I saw you guys win 6-2 the weekend. Don't know where that came from. Bale with four goals. Championship for you, isn't it? Obviously, this is awkward without fear, which I'm kind of glad about. I was glad about until I saw you know you score six goals. Um, the Georgian midfielder, what for? Have Chikavidze, I think I saw you say it. I'm not sure, but he's a really good player. I don't think he'll be there next season. But for Swansea, yeah, we got a much needed win against Oxford United on the weekend, a 2 1 win. Bit nervy towards the end, but overall deserve the win. Our first win and the first goals in over nine hours. So hopefully, we can build a bit of confidence going into Watford because we've got some very hard games coming up Burnley and Leeds after we play you guys tomorrow. And Watford are doing very well this season. Um, obviously, we're in the top six. 
surprised by that, to be honest. Tom Clary doing a very, very good job. But away from home, apart from that Sheffield Wednesday result, who didn't win the last few. Um, so hopefully, you know, obviously it's a Tuesday night, so it could be a tricky one uh, for your fans to come down to. Uh, a couple of seasons ago, we beat you 4 0. Last season, you beat us 1 0. So I'm going to go for a 2 1 Swans victory. I think um, us being a home and obviously it's a bit further for you guys to travel on a Tuesday, and especially when you play it away on the weekends. Well, I think it could just play into a favour. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go 2 1 win. Hopefully, um, you enjoy the video. And yeah, good luck on Tuesday night. Once again, a massive thank you to Reese for his contribution to the video. And as he said there, actually, this game is taking place on fireworks night here in the UK. So if you're watching from abroad and are thinking, James, I have no idea what you're talking about. And I'll just give you a bit of quick context now. So every year on the 5th of November, uh, we celebrate fireworks night or Guy Fawkes night, which is essentially celebrating the foiled plot of a man named Guy Fawkes who centuries ago tried to explode the Houses of Parliament in central London uh, with gunpowder and every year at local events and gatherings in parks and fields and at organised displays um, we all gather um, to launch fireworks into the sky essentially uh, in celebration of that foiled plot so yes I've gone off on a bit of a tangent there but there is some context for viewers um, if you aren't aware of what the hell I am talking about. But let's hope we see some fireworks from Watford's performance at the Liberty Stadium on Tuesday night. Unfortunately, we do have a few injuries to contend with. I have the team news just to the right of me here on my computer. And Tom Cleverley has confirmed that Angelo Obona, Jeremy Ngakia and Tom Deli Bashiru uh, will still all be absent for this match. Of course, Angelo Obona is more of a long-term hamstring issue. Uh, but yeah, Tom Deli Bashiru and Jeremy Ngakia are still unfortunately unavailable. So what we thought were going to be short-term injuries uh, are turning out to be more longer-term issues, which is a bit concerning because I did feel at the time when Tom Deli Bashiru um, had all that strapping on his knee, I felt like that was a bit concerning. It felt like we were forcing him to play through pain and through injury. And unfortunately, my worst fears have kind of come to fruition. Tom Cleverley confirmed uh, about a week ago he had to have fluid drained from his knee due to excessive swelling. Um, so, yeah, unfortunately, using my uneducated uh, football brain, I do think uh, Tom Deli especially will be out for a prolonged period of time, which is a shame because he has been uh, one of Watford's better performers this season. Musa Sissoko is serving the second match of his three-match retrospective fan after the alleged headbutt against Blackburn Rovers, which I still feel was harsh. I hope you've all had the chance to look at that incident on social media. I wouldn't call it a head butt. I would call it more of a head movement. Um, that was then later reported after the game. So I think Blackburn really were probably um, just salty after Watford's victory and therefore decided to put in a ridiculous complaint where no one got injured really um, and the whole situation was just blown out of proportion. But yes, Musa Sissoko serving the second of his ridiculous uh, free match suspension. And you might not be aware, but Ryan Porteous actually picked up his fifth yellow card of the season uh, in our victory over Sheffield Wednesday. So Ryan Porteous, the goal scorer, uh, the first goal scorer in that game, I should say, uh, will be missing out at the Liberty Stadium on Tuesday uh, due to obviously accruing them five yellow cards, uh, which means a one match ban. Swansea under Luke Williams have had a pretty indifferent start to the season. Not overly exceptional, but equally uh, not too underwhelming either. They currently sit in the 12th position on 16 points, which is probably about right for where Swansea are at as a club at the moment. I'm sure their fans will want to be more ambitious and ultimately push for a playoff position. And maybe that's what they expect for this season, I'm not entirely sure. But when I look at Swansea City and some of the players they have at their disposal, I don't really see them finishing 
any higher than you know mid to upper mid table um, in the championship this season. And actually, in the past few games, they've really, really struggled to score goals uh, and pick up victories. Their victory recently against Oxford, the 2-1 win, um, was the first win in, I believe, five games. So they really struggled to pick up um, points both home and away in the past couple of months. Uh, and I'm sure after that victory, they will be going out into this game at home uh, with some renewed confidence against Watford. So in terms of my score prediction. How do I think the Hornets are going to fare? Uh, what I will say is that I do not think Vacuum Bio will be scoring four goals again uh, in this fixture, but I have hope and I have confidence that Watford will pick up another three points ahead of that clash against Oxford on Friday night under the lights at Vicarage Road. So I'm going to go with, oh, what do I go with? I'm struggling here. Mm, I'm going to go with a 2-0 Watford victory on the road. Quite positive, quite bold, actually. Um, a clean sheet for the Hornets, which hopefully will do Daniel Batman uh, the world of good. And I'm going to go with uh, Daniel Jebison. I mean, I keep saying this every week. I keep backing Jebison to get his first Watford goal, but he's not really being given an opportunity. So I'll go with Daniel Jebison to open his Watford account. Uh, and I'll go with Georgie Shafatatse uh, to add another goal to his tally um, as well. So 2-0 win for me. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Don't forget to subscribe to The Watford Way because we'll be live here on Tuesday night about five minutes or so before kickoff for our live match watch long. It's always a good laugh talking to you guys um, about the game as it's going on live. Um, so please join us here for that. As I said, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like in the video and make sure to check us out on social media, on Twitter, on Instagram, on Facebook, and of course our other content here on YouTube. And apart from that, I'll catch you here live on Tuesday evening for Swansea City versus Watford. Bye-bye.